Chief, you've lost your captain for the derby. What's Alex Rufa done and how long is he likely to be out for? Uh, so he copped a knock uh, against Perth at the end of the game. It was an inflamed bursa. Uh, and the swelling and the stiffness hasn't gone down, so it'd be a risk to play him tomorrow. So we ruled him out. Considering this is the first derby, he's obviously a, your captain and a New Zealand international, I'm sure he would have really been looking forward to, to playing in this game. So what were the conversations with him and how gutted is he to, to miss this one? No, he was uh, hugely disappointed. It's such a big uh, event for us, you know, first derby. Um, we'd love to see him, you know, part of it. But again, we've got Paolo Retro coming in. He'll do a really good job for us and uh, really looking forward to the match. Because with Rufa, had you left it like as late as possible? Was it quite, off, you know, even quite early in the week that he was likely to be out? Yeah, I was hopeful that he'll be, he'll be ready. Um, he, we're trying to get him on feet today to run to see how it is because I'm starting to think forward to Mariners uh, and hopefully he'll be ready for that. And so with Paolo and, and Marco, what are the expectations for, for their minutes and yep. does that offset, you know, the loss of him that you've got two of your, your big signings available? No, fantastic. Uh, you know, Paolo coming back in. Marco, he's had a speedy recovery um, and uh, to be fair, looks really good uh, at training uh, last session. Uh, so, you know, uh, where we lose Roofs, who's an integral part of the team, you know, we, we game with those two players. And what are your expectations for the derby? Um, I guess this is the first time you'll experience coaching in a, a derby. Um, yeah, what are you looking forward to for tomorrow? I think like most derbies, you know, it's more the anticipation. It's uh, derby's really more about the fans uh, and you know the home advantage and you know it's a there's a, always a big build up. You know, I've been fortunate that um, I've seen some big derbies in my time. Uh, the biggest one was 2011 uh, Pep and Jose in the Super Classical at. Uh, uh, at Bernabeu, that was an experience, but it was the whole lead up to the week, um, and the players feel it, the fans feel it. You know, there's um, you know boasting rights and so on. So it's it's an event. Steve Corica says all the pressures on the Phoenix being at home for the first derby. Do you think oh, I find that very hard uh, to believe. One, uh, I don't think they've left New Zealand yet. You know, we've just come back from Perth, um, and I would say, you know, with the money that he has available for players and so on, he's a strong favourite. How have you been able to sort of shut out that noise through the week? Um, there's been a lot of build-up around town about this. You, you're satisfied <coughs> that the players have been able to concentrate on the game? No, our players uh, treat this game like every other game. You know, if we beat Auckland, we're only going to we're only going to get three points. So, um, you know, the importance for every game that we go into is the same. Um, I think it's more, you know, the dynamic with the New Zealand teams and so on. Um, it's new, and but once we play that first that first game, the monkey will be off the back, and you know, um, you know, hopefully they enjoy it. And sort of the young guys, probably for some of them, they'll be feeling this is probably one of the biggest games they've played. A few of the, the newer regular starters so far this season. What's your sort of pieces of advice been to them? Just embrace the moment. Um, you know, both teams uh, will feel the same anxiety, the same fear, and you know, it's the team that handles that better. I think you know, um, and. Uh, again, it's just staying in the moment, controlling what you can control. And, and, and again, it's more about really focusing on what they can control in those big moments. And if they stick to what we train, how we prepare, they'll be fine. What do you hope that a rivalry like this will do for football in New Zealand sort of long term? Is it, is it significant? I think so. I, I mentioned before that um, the, the landscape needs here a rivalry, but what it does, it, it broadens the supporter base. Uh, and healthy uh, derby is always a good talking point. So the long-term effect is that, you know, if we build some memories in the game, uh, you know, like significant moments, that next generation of young kids that watch it on the TV or come to the game want to be part of football. And, you know, that keeps uh, the long-term uh, uh, longevity of the game. Chief, there is a trophy, so to speak, up for grabs sure. in this game. What does that add to this fixture? I uh, like anything, it's, uh, you know, it's a nice piece uh, of silverware to have, but again, our focus is on the three points. You know, uh, whether we play Central Coast Mariners, uh, Sydney FC, you know, it has the same value. Um, the trophy is just, you know, more for boasting rights, I think, than anything, and I think it's healthy. Um, you know, the, the talk about money and how much money Auckland have has been thrown around a lot. Do you think mm -hmm. that is a big difference between Phoenix and Auckland in the sense that the Phoenix have been around for 17 years, have gone through trial and error? Mm -hmm to get to this point, and that is maybe the big identity difference between the two clubs? That's a good question. I think, look, I can only talk about our club. 
um, you know, our motto is Ere Te Keo, you know, it's a, a rise from the ashes basically and, you know, we really live our motto, you know, the, the club f for so long has been, you know, under scrutiny, whether it was viable, whether it, you know, um, you know, whether it merited to be in the league, has gone through so many ups and downs financially as well, supporter base, post-COVID, um, and, you know, every hurdle that we've you know, we've, we've met, we've overcome, and that shows, that really ties into what the meaning of the club is. And I think tomorrow's game is more about our fan base enjoying that and enjoying that history. And this is just another part of that, that history. Um, as for Auckland, you know, they're just starting. I'm not really sure, you know, what their mission is, you know, long-term, and that's something for them to forge. But for us, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a real symbolic moment. And just talking on the fans too, what role do they play tomorrow? Um, what, what message are you sending out to them? I think that they're everything. They need to come out in force tomorrow. We need to fill the stadium. We need to show what Wellington football is about. We also need to represent the history. We need to give the fans something to be proud of. There needs to be good energy from the players. You know, it's a celebration. No different to the Melbourne Victory game when we played last year. That was a fantastic moment. But now this is more about New Zealand about you know who owns football at the moment uh, uh, in this country. How is the team treating Alex Paulson's return? Is he someone who still a friend teammate, um, or is he? The yeah, owner? I don't think there's any animosity towards Alex. You know, he's he's got uh, deserving move and so on. And I saw a social media post. I think it was yesterday that you know he he loves the club still, and you know he's forever indebted, and you know we're forever indebted for what he did last year. So there's no bad blood between us. You know. Uh, you know, when I see him, uh, when the coaching staff see him, they'll give him a big hug and so on, wish him luck, and but obviously not too much luck, but, you know. Um, but again, you know, um, he'll be like all the other 11 players that are on the pitch tomorrow. And what have you made of Auckland as a team and um, what are their threats, do you think? Um, look, I think it's really early. I think it's, it's fantastic they won their first two games, but to sustain that sort of form long-term, you know, um, that's a question for maybe you can ask me around round 10. Uh, I think defensively they've been very tight um, and I think, you know, they caught Sydney FC on a good day yesterday, uh, uh, sorry, last week. Um, I think, you know, Sydney had travelled and so on and, you know, they had the home advantage and, uh, you know, the drama was, the, the, the good thing for them was that up until the 97th they still believed they could win and, you know, were still pushing hard. So that's a good sign on their part. But again, I think, you know, with any team this season, us included, you know, we need six or ten games to really see where teams are at and to face the travel, to face, you know, um, some injuries and so on, challenge the depth of the squad. These are the real challenges uh, for most teams. Are you worried that not having Rufa could tip the scale in, in midfield in their favour? Um, look, Rufa is a very big part of our team. You know, he's our captain. Where we will be missing is more of his leadership, uh, and obviously with the ball and defensively gives us that. Uh, but the players that we're coming in are going to do an adequate, uh, just as adequate job, I believe. Where we really need someone is some of the other senior players to step up and lead on the pitch tomorrow. Who's your vice captain? Who's going to wear the armband? It'll be Scotty Wooden. He'll be captain.